Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Wednesday, September the 3rd, 2025. Now, in this update, we are monitoring an area of disturbed weather out there in the central main development region. This is still expected to brush very close to the northern leeward islands over the next 7 to 10 days as a possible tropical depression or tropical storm. So anybody living on the Leeward Islands as well as the Greater and Lesser Antilles need to be watching this system very closely as this could develop into our next tropical depression or tropical storm. And then, of course, areas along the coast here of the United States need to be watching this system as well as this could recurve out to sea a little too late, similar to Aaron. So in this update, we'll be breaking down all those details. Now, if you haven't been here before and you do find these tropical weather outlook and discussions very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification icon to get daily tropical weather updates, including tropical live weather coverage of any landfalling hurricane or tropical storm in the next couple of days. Hit that like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. Now, looking at the deep tropical Atlantic here on the satellite imagery, the true color, and we can clearly see where our area of disturbed weather actually is. We have a monsoonal trough here that the system is entangled up with right now, but due to the fact that there is a little bit of convection here that remains disorganized, meaning that this system is trying its very hardest to consolidate here as it moves generally towards the west at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Most of the models do indicate that this is going to develop into our next tropical depression or tropical storm, which would be Tropical Storm Gabrielle in our list of named storms of the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season. And there is definitely some decent model guidance that this is going to either clip very close to the northern leeward islands of the Greater Antilles, or it's going to impact the islands directly in the next seven to 10 days. Now, when we view this on the latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, they do have a red area highlighted here in the central and western main development region due to the fact that there is a medium to high chance that this is going to develop into our next tropical depression or tropical storm. So therefore, as of 2 p.m. this afternoon for the eastern tropical Atlantic, a tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic a few hundred miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands continues to produce disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions remain conducive for additional development of this system during the next several days, and a tropical depression is likely to form late this week or the weekend while the system is expected to move generally westward to the west-northwest at about 15 miles per hour. So again, the way this is going to be moving, the red highlighted area now is over Guadalupe, as well as um, Dominica, Martinique, as well as some of these other islands. So you definitely need to be paying very close attention to this system as significant tropical development is not off the table just yet. So with that being said, let's take a look now at all of our reliable global computer models for this afternoon and evening, because a lot of people are wondering exactly where this could be threatening and how strong it's going to get. So let's take a look first at our European model for this afternoon. And you can see there is our area of disturbed weather that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring very closely. This is a look at the 850 millibar vorticity plot showing us how much spin there is in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet. And so when we put this into motion, you can see that the Euro does consolidate this within the next three to four days as a weak tropical depression or even a tropical storm. And then it strengthens a little bit more as it approaches the Caribbean here. And when we zoom in, you can see how compact this actually is. And that's a big problem because if we do have a very compact system here, that means this is susceptible of rapid intensification on approach to some of the greater and lesser Antilles here. So the European model in this case has this impacting, say, Dominica, St. Lucia Islands in the next 186 hours, all right? So this would be for the peak of hurricane season. Yes, what a coincidence for September the 10th and the 11th, which is the peak. You can see this moving across those islands and then possibly impacting Puerto Rico as a tropical storm here. The Euro doesn't show much more in the way of intensification, likely due to some vertical wind shear in the northeastern portion of the Caribbean. That's why 
this is pretty much a graveyard for any development typically unless it's very strong to begin with and it could survive its passage through the caribbean so in that case in the next 10 days this is where the euro has it and if we look at prior model runs this is a little bit to the southwest from last night's zero z run you can see the difference here a little stronger and a little further to the southwest impacting puerto rico and hispaniola in about 10 plus days now looking at the gfs here let's zoom in on the caribbean because this is going to be very important because the gfs still has this a little bit to the north similar to aaron where it went through and you can see in the next six days or so 144 hours out this is for tuesday late morning early afternoon on the 9th of september we could see that our system is over here so definitely a lot slower on the gfs model versus all of our other models that indicate that it's going to be a little faster which really has a big impact on how far west this is actually going to go but the gfs has a much stronger system here clipping the northeastern portion there of the caribbean and the leeward islands in a little over seven days away and this would be for thursday afternoon into early friday morning september the 11th and 12th so 210 hours out and this would be a very 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 formidable hurricane something in the books of aaron where it was be where it pretty much was a category five and a category four at this time so similar intensities here from what we saw with aaron on the gfs and now what we're seeing here with perhaps tropical storm gabrielle and this goes out to about 10 days because this is at the 18z run which is currently rendering and it does show us a very very intense cyclone here and if we look at the actual air pressure 940 to 947 millibars so that is a very 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 deep cyclone by all means with very little in the way of vertical wind shear over the system so that is something to really consider here it's gonna be another huge ace producer according to with what the gfs actually shows when we take a look here at the Canadian model, um, really quickly on the vorticity plot, you can see the Canadian model has a weaker system, more broader in nature, and it is a little bit further to the north. And the reason why it has a weaker system is because initially it's weaker to begin with. There's a little bit of drier air than what other models are showing, and it's going to interact with that tut cell a little bit, which stands for tropical upper level tropospheric trough, if that makes sense, which would um, help to put some wind shear onto the system and put some brakes on the how quick this intensifies. But it does try to get its act together in about 10 days. So we do have a range of possible outcomes with the euro down over here, the GFS over here, and now the Canadian over here. Let's take a look now at the icon model over the Caribbean because that one is further, uh, most further to the west here. And as we actually go, let's look at our 12Z run because the 18Z run only goes out to about five days versus our seven day forecast is on our intermediate run. And you can see right there approaching, this one is much further to the north, but if we look actually at the previous or the current run, this is definitely a lot further south. So there is a lot and a lot of uncertainty on exactly where this is going to impact. But wherever it does, there will be some impact with this. I strongly believe we can be looking again at a tropical depression or tropical storm with winds of about 30 to 45 miles per hour. Now, the upper level environment is pretty much straightforward. We do have this tut cell that is to the north of the system that's helping to increase a little bit of vertical wind shear over our system, not a whole lot. And that's going to be the thing going forward is how, where does this consolidate and where is this tut cell actually at? Because this is the one that brings a vertical wind shear and some dry air entrainment into our system. So looking at the GFS model here, the, the tut cell remains to the north far enough to where we get nice, good anticyclonic outflow in most quadrants. It's strongest out towards the west of the system, which is pretty much what we want for intensification because that tells us there's not much vertical westerly vertical wind shear over the system. And so in this case, the GFS does show a very favorable environment here for strengthening as it does try to avoid that tut cell. And then as we go out to day 10 here, um, there's very little vertical wind shear out here. Um, and then it's going to really be important to whether or not 
where this trough actually is off the eastern seaboard because if our system is too close to that it is going to likely get pulled out to the north but if we look at our latest or our 12z gfs model which i again i don't like actually i'm not going to go beyond 10 days for many reasons never mind about that and so again how where does this get how far west does this get and who gets impacted in the united states we don't even know the answer in today's update looking at all of our reliable ensemble forecasts here starting with the euro first and we can see that there is still plenty of members here that bring this over the greater antilles such as leeward islands of the northeastern caribbean in a little over seven to ten days from happening while some of the other cluster of models still have this turning to the north a little sooner avoiding the united states likely as this there is there's a weakness in the subtropical ridge here you can see a little bit of a trough and so that would allow the system to turn out to sea a little sooner versus a weaker system that tends to head further to the west a little longer looking at the gefs ensemble that's what this actually shows a much stronger trough out here the ridge is far enough to the northeast where once this actually tries to consolidate it's going to go out to sea a little sooner rather than later and the gfs has been um, showing that for a while now looking at the google deep mind model here this is the only model or the the two ai models really outliers here showing a system impacting directly into the northeastern caribbean in about 10 or so days and some members here bring this um and so we can see what the fn v3 model actually shows which is the google deep mind model and then another model that we like to look at here is a google generation model deep mind also showing us our system um either missing the islands equally as much as it impacting the islands directly in about about seven to ten days or so so there th th there's no don't let your guard down on this. There is still a threat to the islands here in the next 10 days that this gets extremely close or impacts the islands directly. Now, with that being said, because of the fact that I'm not feeling 100% as I stated in this morning's community post on my YouTube channel, if you want to go check that out, this video is going to end up being a little shorter than I normally like to have them because I like to show you all sea surface temperatures and other factors with this system as well. But because I'm not feeling 100%, this is going to be a little bit of a limited version. I'm hoping I'll feel a lot better tomorrow to where I can actually go into a little more in depth with our tropical system out here in the MDR. But otherwise, if you did find this video very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving on the tropics, and if you haven't been here before, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that like button, share this video with their family and friends on social media, hit that bell notification icon to get all of my daily tropical weather updates, even so I'm feeling under the weather today. But otherwise, thank you all for watching and I'll be back with you more tomorrow, depending on how I feel.